Hey guys, YouTuber100 here. Alright, and now continuing with Star Trek movie reviews. Now, here I am starting to take a look at the reboot trilogy. Now here I am with a review of 2009 Star Trek film. Uh, so overall, I do think that this is a pretty good movie. I mean, yeah, it's probably like maybe really good, but it's not like great or anything. Like, it's no like really like epic masterpiece or anything. Like some people try to make it out like that, and make it seem like a phenomenal movie, but yeah, it's really not like a, that level of good and great. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, Rotten Tomatoes has this film rated as the best Star Trek movie of all time. And, uh, no, it's definitely not at that level. I mean, yeah, I mean, I remember I went to see this movie in the theater when it was originally released. And, yeah, I mean, I did, I liked it just fine. Like, I did think that this was a pretty good movie. But at the same time with this film, like I have told you guys before... The, this film, and really, like, these new Star Trek films, are really, like, just pure examples of why I don't like J.J. Abrams. I don't like J.J. Abrams at all. Because, you know, with, because, yeah, with, like, these films, and, of course, like, he, what he did with Star Wars The Force Awakens, this is just, like, why I don't like him. Because he just tries to take other people's projects that he didn't even come up with and it's like he's just trying to outdo the original makers of the, the projects and he tries to, to just outdo them by just like trying to make them like really like action-packed and stuff and he just likes overloading stuff with like a bunch of action scenes and this is why I don't like him just because he just always does this like he done it with these and he did it with Star Wars like I just really do not like J.J. Abrams because of what he does it's like he just tries to overload his films with a bunch of action scenes and effects and yeah it's just like I really don't like that he does that I just don't like how he tries to outdo people on projects that he didn't even come up with so, yeah, so, yeah, that's really the main reason why I don't like J.J. Abrams at all. Just because he tries to always outdo people on things that he didn't even create to begin with. I mean, it would be nice if J.J. Abrams could actually come up with his own ideas and actually, like, do something original instead of, like, take other people's projects and just try outdoing the original creators. So, yeah. But, I mean, this film overall, I do think it is good. Like, I will say this about this film. This film really did, like, kind of get me interested in looking into Star Trek. And, like, trying to, like, just watch some of it. Because, yeah, this was actually the first thing, like, Star Trek related I ever watched before. Well, yeah, at least the first, like, movie and stuff. Like, as I've told you before, I did, like, kind of watch some of the Star Trek TV shows before. But, yeah, this is, like, really when I was, like, kind of... When I first saw this film, this was really something that really kind of got me interested in, like, watching more Star Trek and just kind of starting to follow it. So, I mean, I will say that about the film. Yeah, and, yeah, this film, this isn't exactly, this isn't really telling, like, the story that the original Star Trek film did at all. Not even, like, what the original films did at all. This film actually does, like, different things. Like, they actually do treat this film as kind of like an origin story for the Enterprise and stuff, at least with, like, S Kirk and Spock and, like, the their crew journeying on the Enterprise. Like, they do, like, kind of treat this as an origin story for Star Trek. I'm not really sure if, like, this, like, that's what the original show actually did. Like I've told you before, I really haven't watched, like, very much of the original, like, Star Trek TV show at all. So, yeah, I'm not sure if, like, that's what the show actually did when it started but yeah this film actually does treat it as an origins film for star trek with spock and kirk and stuff and i do think that it does have a pretty good story to it and plot and stuff yeah and i mean it does kind of have like a decent cast i mean it has chris pine in this movie as kirk and i don't know i mean i guess like i'm really not too crazy with chris pine as kirk like 
Kirk really just has a really different personality in this film than like he did originally, like when William Shatner portrayed Kirk. And I really don't, I'm not really too crazy about the new, like, the personality of Kirk in this film. Like, I do like William Shatner's portrayal of Kirk much more than the Chris Pine here. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not really too crazy about Chris Pine as Kirk. Zachary Quinto as Spock. I actually think he does a pretty good job in this film. I mean, of course, like, I like Leonard Nimoy more. But, I mean, Zachary Quinto, he does pretty good. Like, he does get the mannerisms down of Spock and stuff. Uh, and plus, like, we do kind of see, like, like, in this film, like, Spock and Kirk, they really don't, like, completely see eye to eye. Like, for most of this film, like, Spock is kind of, like, against Kirk and stuff, and he really doesn't want Kirk journeying with him in space or stuff. But he eventually does come around, so yeah, that's good. And I did, like, I thought it was pretty cool that they were able to get Leonard Nimoy to come back and, like, play the older version of Spock in this film. So, yeah, it was kind of, like, a good homage to have Leonard Nimoy come back as the older Spock, yeah. And in this film, like, have Eric Bana as the villain, Captain Nero. Yeah. And, yeah, it has, like, Zoe Saldana as Yuhura. It has Carl Urban as Dr. McCoy. Simon Pegg as Scotty. John Cho as Sulu. And Anton Yelchin as Chekhov. So, I mean, yeah, they, I guess they're all pretty good. Like, the crew in this film, like, they all look much younger than, like, in the original Star Trek film series and even like in the show in a sense like what I've seen in the show like the crew in this film actually does look much younger so it was interesting that they kind of like gave the crew kind of like make them seem younger in this version so I thought that was kind of interesting and yeah like I said I mean it does have kind of like an interesting plot and premise of this film and stuff and yeah, I mean, overall, like, like I said before, it's not really, like, a great, great film, but I still do enjoy it. Like, I still think it is a pretty good film. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not really quite as good as, like, Wrath of Khan or Voyage Home, but I'd say it's probably, like, on par with Undiscovered Country and First Contact. I think it's kind of like a three-way tie for, like, all three of these. Like, this film, First Contact, and Undiscovered Country, I think they're just about, like, on the level with each other. So yeah, I would probably give this film like three and a half stars out of four. Like, yeah, a pretty good movie. Just like, not like really any like phenomenal masterpiece like some people make it out to be. Alright, so yeah, let me just get right into the film. Alright, so the movie opens up in the 23rd century on the USS Kelvin. And they're like investigating like... A uh, supposed lightning storm going on in space. And then, like, the Narada, which is a Romulan ship, ends up, like, emerging from the storm and attacks the Kelvin. But then, like, Io, the Narada's first officer, demands that the Kelvin's captain, Robal, to come aboard their ship to negotiate a truce. And he ends up like complying and then and like he ends up like being questioned about like the current star date as well as like the ambassador Spock who he really is not familiar with at all then eventually Nero the commissioner of the Narada ends up killing Ang Isle or no 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 uh, a Robal and then he continued to attack on the Kelvin. And then the Kelvin's first officer, George Kirk, who was played by Chris Hemsworth, which I thought was interesting. He then just ended up, like, ordering all the personnel on the ship, which included, like, his pregnant wife, Winona, to end up abandoning the ship while he, like, piloted the Kelvin to a collision course with Narada. And, like, as he was, was, like, colliding with the Narada, Winona ended up giving birth to, to uh, the baby. And then they decided to name the baby, of course, Jim. Yeah, and then eventually, and then just, yeah, George then eventually, like, collided with the ship, and then, yeah, both ships ended up being destroyed. 
And then 17 years later, it showed that Kirk was kind of just like becoming kind of just a reckless sort of individual. And he was like taking cards and stuff and he was just kind of like getting himself into kinds of trouble and stuff. And at the same, while well, that's going on, like on the planet Vulcan, it then showed like the young Spock. He was like accepted into joining the Vulcan Science Academy. But then like once he uh, discovered that the Academy like ended up viewing his human mother as a disadvantage, he ended up like joining the Starfleet instead. And then later on, like, Kirk just ended up, like, becoming, like, a really intelligent. And Kirk was in a bar, and he met, like, Yahura, who was just kind of mysterious. She was just, like, like being kind of, like, mysterious to Kirk and stuff. And then eventually, like, Kirk ended up, like, getting in a bar fight with a bunch of cadets that were accompanying Yahura. And then eventually Kirk ended up meeting Captain Christopher Pike... And then, after having a discussion with, with Captain Pike, like, he then just encouraged Kirk to enlist into the Starfleet Academy as well. And so then Kirk aboarded the ship to I'm a part of the Starfleet Academy, and then he also ended up, like, meeting Dr. Leonard McCoy and ended up befriending him. And then, a, a few years later, or during, like, a... A disciplinary hearing, Kirk ended up like being accused of Spock of cheating during the Kobayashi Maru simulation and Kirk was just trying to make an argument that the cheating was acceptable because it was designed to be unbeatable. But then just the hearing ended up like being interrupted by a distress call from the Vulcan planet. And then, and then yeah, then just the all the fleets ended up being, like, just, all, all the cadets ended up, like, just being mobilized and aboarded ships. And then, like, McCoy and Kirk ended up, like, sneaking aboard Pike's ship, which ended up being the Enterprise. Yeah. And then, Kirk then, like, eventually, like, realized that the lightning storm that was being observed was actually similar to the one that happened when he was born. He then just broke the protocol and then he just told old Pike that the distress signal actually ended up being a trap. And then eventually the Enterprise arrived to the planet and then and, and then they ended up like finding the fleet ended up being destroyed. And Narada was actually attempting to drill into Vulcan's core. And then, yeah, Narada also ended up, like, attacking the Enterprise. And Pike ended up, like, surrendering. And then, like, he just handed over the command of the ship over to Spock. And then, Kirk was also ended up promoted to the first officer. And then, Kirk, Sulu, and the chief engineer... Olsen, and I'm like space jumping onto the drilling platform, and then they had like a fight with some of the other her people of the Narada, or yeah, the, the ones on the Narada, and yeah, it just like had a huge fight with a bunch of explosions and stuff, yeah, just, yeah, J.J. Abrams stuff, yeah, and during the fight, like, Olsen ended up being killed, but Kirk and Sulu were able to disable the drill. And then, like, Nero, Nero just ended up, like, launching what was known as Red Matter into the Vulcan's core, which ended up, like, forming a black hole that destroyed Vulcan. And then, eventually, like, Spock beamed onto Vulcan, and he ended up, like, rescuing the... He counsel, and he also tried to rescue his parents, too, but, yeah, as they were, like, beaming aboard the Enterprise, Spock's mother ended up, like, falling and to her death, but everyone else was aboarded on the Enterprise, yeah. And then Narada was then starting to move towards Earth. Earth, yeah. And then, like, Pike was just being 
like, held on the Narada, and then Nero just was just torturing Pike and attempting to gain access to the defense codes of Earth. And after, like, Kirk was just trying to explain you know, stuff to Spock, and just, like, trying to just up, not go by Spock's commands, Spock just eventually ended up uh, marooning Kirk on the Delta Vega. And once Kirk arrived on the Delta Vega, he then, like, saw an older version of Spock, who was played by Leonard Nimoy. And it was, like, interesting. Like I said before, Spock was, like, kind of, like, being homage to what he... the His original old time as Spock. Yeah, he was actually reciting some of his older lines, like, Live long and prosper, and you shall always be Kirk's friend. And he was just, like, saying a few of, like, his old lines, so that was interesting. Yeah, the older Spock was then just explaining to Kirk that him and Nero are actually, like, from 129 years into the future, and in his version of the future, Romulus actually ended up, like, being threatened by a supernova, and S Spock's attempt to use that red matter or was to create, like, the, the art of the black hole and consume the supernova, that ended up, like, failing, and Nero's family ended up being perished along with the Romulus, and Narada, along with Spock's ship, ended up, like, being caught in the black hole, and it ended up being, sending them back in time, and Nero ended up, like, being strained, like, ended up stranding Spock on Delta Vega to watch the destruction of Vulcan, and after they were able to may reach a Starfleet outpost on Delta Vega. Then, like, Kirk and the older Spock ended up, like, meeting Scotty. And then, old, the older Spock then just beamed Kirk and Scotty on back onto the Enterprise. And then, just, after, like, some advice from the older Spock, Kirk then was just, like, like, saying a bunch of stuff to, like, the younger Spock, like, in order to get him to provoke Spock, uh, get him Spock to provoke Kirk, and just attack him, and then that's what Spock did. And then that just ended up, like, forcing Spock to just see that he was emotionally compromised, and then Spock just ended up, like, handing over the command of the Enterprise over to Kirk, and then, after a discussion with his father, Spock then decided to help Kirk out. And then, as the Enterprise was hiding itself in a gas cloud, Kirk and Spock then just went aboard the Narada. And then, yeah, Kirk was fighting with Nero and Io. And he eventually ended up, like, killing them. Um, and then, Pike ended up being rescued. And then Spock used, like, his older self's ship to destroy the drill. And then Spock just ended up, like, leading the Narada away from the Earth, and then he collided the two ships together. And then Kirk, Pike, and Spock just were then beamed back aboard the Enterprise. And then, yeah, with the two ships colliding, the red matter ended up, like, being ignited. And then, and, like, Kirk also tried to offer help to Nero to escape, but Nero refused his help, and then that just ended up, like, forcing Kirk to order the fire. And then, yeah, Narada just ended up being consumed in a black hole. Yeah. And then, later on, Kirk then was then promoted to the captain of the Enterprise. And then, Pike was also promoted to the rear admiral position, yeah. And then it showed, like, Spock then coming across, like, his older self. So, yeah, it was pretty surreal to kind of, like, see the older Spock and the newer Spock, like, like face-to-face. -face. Like, that was pretty surreal and kind of, like, an interesting moment there, yeah. And then, yeah, the older Spock just, like, persuaded the 
young Spock to just continue serving in the Starfleet and to encourage him for once to do what feels right instead of what is actually logical. And then, yeah, Spock then just remained with the Starfleet and he like, just was the first officer under Kirk's command. And then it just showed the Enterprise going to warp and yeah, the Elder Spock like as the movie was ending, was just like reciting the where nowhere where no one has gone before monologue, which included like him saying space the final frontier and stuff. And so yeah, that's how the movie ended. So yeah, three and a half stars out of four. A pretty good movie. Not a great one, but still a pretty good one. Yeah, and some yeah, with like some good performances, yeah, even though like Chris Pine, like, I really am not too crazy with his interpretation of Kirk. Like, like, I mean, he is still, like, he's not a horrible Kirk. Like, he's still, like, with, as his own version, he is, I guess, like, pretty good in the role. Like, he's not horrible, but I just prefer the way William Shatner portrayed Kirk. Kirk, but I mean, yeah, Chris Pine, like, as, with his own portrayal, like, he's alright. But yeah, Zachary Quinto, still good as Spock, and yeah, just a really, and yeah, just like a really cool moment to see him and Leonard Nimoy face to face like that, I mean, yeah, and just seeing Leonard Nimoy back like that, I mean, it was pretty cool too. Alright, so yeah, alright, so yeah, that does it for a review of 2009 Star Trek, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.